Welcome back. So this is the second video for redox reaction on oxidizing and reducing agent. Here's a recall. Note that redox can not occur uh, just singly. Okay, the oxidation must always occur with reduction and vice versa. So what are redox agents? I've also briefly defined this in the lab session. Uh, something that oxidizes another another substance will be called an oxidizing agent. Something that reduces another substance is called a reducing agent. Okay, for example, let's look at this equation. We have zinc reacting with uh, copper 2 nitrate to give zinc 2 nitrate and copper. Can you try and write the ionic equation and hence determine what is oxidized and what is being reduced? Okay, so here is the um, ionic equation. You can see that zinc became zinc 2 plus. So if I write the half equation, I'll see that from zinc to become zinc 2 plus, it should lose two electrons, right? And remembering oil rig, okay, oxidation is to lose electron. So since I lost two electron, it means that zinc has been oxidized to zinc 2 plus. Correspondingly, uh, it means that copper 2 plus was the one that has oxidized zinc to zinc 2 plus. So we say that the oxidizing agent here is copper 2 plus ions. Similarly, we see that copper 2 plus has been reduced to copper because there's a gain of two electrons. So we say that zinc metal has reduced copper 2 plus to copper and hence the reducing agent is zinc. Is that, is that clear so far? Okay, so here are some examples of common redox agents. And here are some common reducing agents. The one that I box out are the common oxidizing agents and reducing agents that are used in organic reactions. So you will see this uh, again in your uh, organic chemistry. Okay, note that potassium iodide, the one that we use in lab, is a reducing agent, and that your hydrogen peroxide, chlorine, is an oxidizing, oxidizing agent. Okay, remember these are your lab practical. They were the one that successfully oxidized iodide to iodine. Okay. Oh, you will ask me, do I need to memorize this? Mm, yes. <laughs> okay. In the sense that um, you need to be able to recognize where I say that I have something, give you something. Uh, this is a common oxidizing agent. So you will be able to predict what is happening to the other uh, reactant. Okay. So here I have this, uh, this video. We add potassium iodide to an unknown substance. Okay, this is actually a test for oxidizing agent. Because iodide tends to be oxidized to iodine. So what do you think you'll be observing? Remember, oxidizing agent will oxidize this substance here, iodide. Oh oops, uh, I was watching Kua more. Yeah, now you know. Okay, so this is the unknown substance, you don't even know what it is, but you know that once I add potassium iodide to it, you see that solution turn yellow. Okay. Actually, the color should be um, from colorless to brown. But I think during our own lab session, we didn't really see the brown color as well. Okay, this is actually due to the concentration. Yellow to brown. If it's very concentrated, we can even see black precipitate. Okay, so whenever you see an unknown substance, change the color of potassium iodide from colorless to yellow or colorless to brown, 
we can conclude that it is an oxidizing agent. Why? Okay, I have an equation here. So this is the equation that we wrote in the lab as well. The brown coloration or, or the coloration to become darker in color to yellow indicates the formation of iodine. I mean, it can't be anything else, right? I had iodide in the solution. What else can be formed? It must be iodine, right? It cannot be chlorine, right? Suddenly. Okay, so the oxidation state of iodine here, because this is the ion or with a negative charge, the oxidation state here is negative 1. Here, the oxidation state here is 0 because it's in its elemental state. So we see that the oxidation state of iodine changes from the number in which species to the number in what other species. Okay, so that's how I always write um, whether something is oxidized or reduced based on the oxidation state number. We can also define it as um, from iodide to iodine, there's a loss of electrons. That's why oil rig oxidation is less, so therefore it is oxidized. Okay, so this statement is still true. Iodide is oxidized to iodine. Therefore, this substance is the oxidizing agent. Okay, clear? Now I have another reaction that involves adding sulfur dioxide gas to something else. We actually learned the test for sulfur dioxide gas before in your QA. Can you recall? I bet not, right? Let's just watch the video. Okay, so this is a sulfur dioxide gas test. We have potassium dichromate. Add 2 CNQ of potassium dichromate. Acidify it with sulfuric acid. Okay, I'll explain why we need to acidify it later. Not that he only add a few drops, huh? Or, or, or she. Oh, okay, I guess she. So we're adding sodium sulfide. Later I'll write an equation for this. Sodium sulfide to HCl. Shake it, shake it. Okay. Now we bubble the gas produced into uh, acidified potassium dichromate and warm it. So first you warm it. I guess she, she failed. So she's warming it up so that the reaction will get started and the gas will be bubbled into potassium dichromate. Note the color of your potassium dichromate. Okay, potassium dichromate is orange right here. Is there a color change? Ah, you see that? It turned green. Oh. Okay, go back. So what are your observations? Okay, this is the equation where there's sodium sulfide here. Add it to your sulfuric acid and you heat it up, you get sulfur dioxide gas. Okay, I think she didn't use sulfuric acid, she used HCl. Okay, but then it's still the same. You'll just get uh, sodium chloride instead. Okay, you still have sulfur dioxide gas produced. When we produce sulfur dioxide gas into acidified potassium dichromate, it turns from orange to green. What can we conclude about the nature of sulfur dioxide? Now, the color of orange to green should be familiar to you also. In your transition metals chapter, okay, we learned that your Cr two O seven two minus is orange color. What is the ion of chromium that is green? Okay, so what can we say about the mixture of sulfur dioxide? or any unknown substances, we can say that it is a reducing agent. Okay, this is a test for reducing agent. Why is that so? Calculate the oxidation state number of chromium here and chromium here. Uh, the one on the right hand side is easy. It is an ion, so it has a charge of 3+. plus. Let me show you how to calculate the oxidation state number of Cr2O7. Okay, again. Let x be the oxidation state number of chromium. Okay, there are two atoms of chromium here, so we have two x. I have seven atoms of oxygen. Remember, oxygen was the assigned value 
it should be generally negative 2. Okay, now it is a polyatomic ion, it has a charge, so it must equal to the charge. Let me do a simple algebra 2x minus 14 equals to negative 2. 2x equals to plus 14 positive 12. So x equals to positive 6. Okay, eh, oh, wow, big mistake here. It should be positive 3, not 3 plus. Remember, sign always come before the value. Okay, positive 6 on the left hand side. So plus 6 to plus 3, there's a decrease in the oxidation state number. Hence, we say that your chromium has been reduced. Okay, dichromic ions were reduced to chromium ions. So this is the observation we will see whenever something is a, a reducing agent. Okay, when we say that it's a reducing agent, we must remember that it itself must be oxidized. Okay, so other than um, your dichromate, we have another common test which is using acidified potassium manganate, the one that we use in the lab. Okay, which will decolorize from purple to colorless. Remember when you add it to the solution of um, uh, what do you add it to? Of uh, iron two sulfate, you see that the color wow like magic like that. The purple suddenly vanish. Okay, so that's the decolorization of purple. Oh, so note that this is purple. Uh, this is something you should have learned in your transition metal also, and your Mn two plus is colorless. So why is it that you saw pale yellow the other day? Now the pale yellow is actually the iron 3 plus solution. Okay, iron 3 has a color as well. So what is the change in oxidation state of manganese? I, I should have shown the answer. I should have had more animation. Okay, never mind. Try calculating out the oxidation state of manganese yourself. Okay, can you get positive 7? Okay, this over here is obviously positive 2. So what is the oxidation state number of manganese here? Try yourself. Do you get the same answer? So when oxidation state number of manganese decrease from positive 7 in MnO4 minus to positive 2, number, species, number, species. Okay, is the oxidation state number of the element decrease from number species to number species. Okay, so hence we say that your um, manganese ions has been reduced to your manganese ions. Okay, so that's all from me. The next lesson, I'll teach you how to write and combine half equations.